Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya Whose bodily movement is the entire universe. Varchikam Sarva Vangmayam Whose speech is the language of the universe. Aharyam Chandrataradi whose ornaments are the moon and the stars. Tam Nama Satvikam Shivam Him we version as the pure Lord Shiva. So the first time Sonali Maushi uh, asked me to perform Angikam at the workshop, um, I was kind of like, I was caught off guard because I had only seen Angikam in the context of dance where we used it as a Shiva Stuti, like very strictly as like an invocation. Oftentimes I think what happens is we, we recite these shlokas and we recite all these things with um, what we think is like a religious purpose or like we just you know, it's in praise of some God, but we don't realize that there's like a, a higher meaning. There's so much thought that has gone into it and like that ob oftentimes gets like glazed over. And when she brought that to my attention, I was like, wow, this is like one of those moments um, where there's like these hidden gems of like, um, just instruction that are just, it's, it's so great. But yeah. I never saw it in the context of, um, of, of the stage and the and the munch and and how it has a meaning beyond just just it's not just in praise of Shiva it's it's telling you as an artist how how to utilize everything around you how to utilize your body and I never I never thought of it that day that way and when she told me and when she told us um, this like different meaning to it as a dancer I'm so used to using my body um, but directing that energy was really hard for me at first and I think that was one thing we focused on a lot during the workshop is how how an, uh, that movement and that energy can play between two characters. It can tell so much about what's going on even without the words. Like she, she also said the, the words are like the last thing but how when ca two characters face each other or face away from each other how that completely changes the way the audience perceives what's happening on stage. So music and dance to me, well first music um, is a very integral part of my life. Um, my dad is a musician, he's a tabla player, so I basically have been listening to music since probably before I was born, I was just always exposed to music and even as a young kid, like as a baby, I used to go to my dad's Dabla concerts and I actually specifically like remember sitting and listening to him play and so the Dal and, and Sur and all of that are just it, very much a part of me. Um, and I, my dad is a very versatile music listener so he listens to many different styles of music and I think I've also followed in the same kind of path as him but even though I listen to all these different styles of music I actually find myself um, when I come back to listening to classical music it's like I've come home because it's like that's what my dad plays and that's what I've grown up with and I find myself gravitating so much to like the sounds of drums and I don't know, it's a, it's, it's a hard thing to say in words. Classical art forms have been around for centuries. They've been a part, I mean, especially I'm a Kathak dancer, and that's lo known as like a, a lok dharm dance. It's like a very close to people, loker people. So um, people have come together through these classical forms. And... Um, what's so special about the classical dance styles and what makes classical styles in general um, what they are is that over so many years there has been such a lineage built. Um, uh, so much thought has gone into how one produces a sound or how one places their hand or how one 
should split apart different beats and an approach style and rhythm. You, you always hear people say like at the end of the day people return to classical no matter where they go and I think it's because it's so well thought out and it's developed so much with people it's so organic over so many years and that's what really sets it apart I think from other styles and I've never I've never had to exchange I've always exchanged like spatial movement you know I've always exchanged air with other dancers you could say but I've never exchanged words with other people and that's a it's a completely different volume it's like the throwing uh, like words back and forth in the way one one actor receives it and then and then returns it is like it's it's so different but it's definitely been an eye-opening experience uh, for me just like observing other actors like when I get to see Monica do the and and I think that's the beauty of it that the that there's two casts doing it because then I get to see how Monica interprets the same lines that I'm saying and I'm like wow like I never really thought of it that way but it's like really cool when she does it like that um, and, and and for me especially I think like the difference between us is like I I tend to I think emote outwardly a little bit more than she does a lot inside and I really admire that and so there are like certain lines where I'm like oh I should I should try to like channel something different um but yeah that's definitely been it's definitely been different for me like dance is a very comfortable space and this is like a space I'm beginning to become comfortable with um it's when Brema she says um she was somewhere else when she sang and she seemed to take the rest of the room with her and then she says I can't remember a time without this music and I was thinking about that actually today um because I feel so much the same way it's like I can't remember a time without this music I for me I I feel I see a lot of myself in Brema aside from the fact that we're both stubborn um but on a deeper level this relationship she has with her mother um, is really interesting actually because it's it's a guru shishya relationship but it's also a mother daughter relationship and they're happening simultaneously and I think it becomes really difficult for someone to be able to differentiate between the two like for me my dad's a tabla player and so a lot of people used to ask me you know your dad plays tabla do you not practice with him all the time like you should be so lucky you have a tabla player in the house and I would always be like, but you don't get it, like he's also my dad. And so every time I used to sit down to practice with him, we would just it would just end up in an argument. Because for me, it was so difficult to separate the fact that he was my father from the fact that he was also my guru. Um, and I think Brema very much goes through the same thing. It's inevitable for her to be in a situation where she's learning music just because it's her mother teaching her it. But at the same time, she feels like she needs to have a choice because she was put in the situation, she was born into the situation. And, you know, other kids whose parents are not their gurus have the choice. They can say, I don't want to do singing anymore, but she doesn't have that choice. And so I, whenever I, I read Brahma's lines, I'm like, I, I, I totally get where she's coming from. And then going back to the line, I, rem I can't remember a time without, some, uh, without this music, I... Um, I, yeah, I can't remember a time without this music. <laughs> I was born with it, so, yeah.